HbA1c test is where you've got a red blood cell and that's swimming around in a soup of sugar molecules. And proportionally to the amount of sugar molecules that are there, some sugar molecules will just attach to the red blood cell. So the two factors that affect how much sugar uh, gets modifies the red blood cell is how much sugar you have and how long that red blood cell sits in that pool of soup for, or basically how long the red blood cell lives for. So in that situation, if you had very long-lived red blood cells, they would have a lot more sugar attaching to them. And we can actually measure that in our clinic. There's When red blood cells come out of the bone marrow, they come out as a cell type called a reticulocyte, which is a little bit bigger and it contains a little bit of RNA. It's a bit of a different hue than normal mature adult red blood cells. We call them reticulocytes. And we can actually measure the number of reticulocytes in somebody's blood. It's a really simple blood test. Now, if somebody's red blood cell number is staying stable, over a series of blood tests, then if we monitor what's happening to their number of new red blood cells that they're having to make to maintain that red blood cell count, we can get an inverse measurement of the lifespan of their red blood cells. So if we have somebody who's, we'll say their red cell count was saying here and here, and their reticular site count started at, we'll say, 50 and then it went down to 40 or 20, then we know that their red blood cells have to be living longer because their red blood cell numbers aren't falling. And that's the strongest cause of an incongruous response between the what we see on the CGM and the HbA1c. I, I'm beginning to find that the HbA1c for carnivores is often near a waste of time. Mm. And I always like to go to the source of the data, which is the CGM. DrStatrust.com